Hi there, husky. Hi there, mile point three husky dog. Hi there, mile point three husky dog. Welcome to mile point three garage. I am Chris, and this is Denali. We're going to continue the engine teardown of our 5.0 Explorer mode. <laughs> She's looking at you. <laughs> saw part one of the engine teardown of this 97 Explorer motor and we got the top end done so now we're going to continue on the bottom end of the motor and see what kind of condition it's in and then I need your advice on what we should be doing to it in order to bring it back to life so here we go part two looking at the crank <clears throat> They actually look pretty good. I don't see any scoring except for right, if you look right there, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's some, uh, can't really feel them, but I don't even know if that's scoring, but it, it's a little bit more prevalent on cylinder three than it is on the rest of them. Uh, each one of them has just a, a slight mark on it, but I don't feel any scratches or any issues with any of the... There's another one that kind of has a slight, slight scratch in it. So we'll see what the uh, machine shop has to say. Same thing there. So all of them have... Looks like... Now that I'm looking at it, several spots that have a little bit of wear on it. I still don't feel like that's much. I don't have a ton of engine building experience. I've only built two engines in my life, um, so I wouldn't consider myself an engine builder. But that looks consistent with the other engines that I've looked at. Let's get this crank out of here. Now I'm going to pull the crank pulley timing chain cover and the timing chain. And I'm sure you've pulled off a crank pulley before, but if you haven't, you're going to need a crank pulley puller. Uh, I got this one on Amazon years back. Uh, I've used it for a lot of different applications, including pulling steering wheels. Uh, but it comes with an end uh, that's kind of a blunt end, just like that, that goes right in there. Uh, before I started this, the three holes that are in the crank pulley were totally clogged. You couldn't even see there were holes there. So I used a, uh, a gun brush and uh, just stuck it down in the holes, cleaned them out, um, and then took some WD-40, sprayed them in there a little bit, blew it out with an air uh, gun, and then threaded uh, the bolts in by hand, pulled them back out, cleaned it again, and then now I'm gonna go back in. So that's kind of where I'm sitting right now. I'm just gonna get these things, the threading started here. All right, that's about even. Tighten that up. Right on the end of the chuck there. All right, just give it a little bit of a tap. And there she is. Then, of course, like all old Fords, there is a water pump bolt that had broken off uh, and uh, got lodged in the block there. So for about a day, I've been trying to get this thing loose. I had a pretty good stud on the end of it right here, uh, but I couldn't get anything to grip. Uh, lost my torch, don't know where it is. So I used a heat gun, mounted it up to a tripod, and just let it sit for about a half an hour, got up to about 250 degrees, and bingo, 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 got it, let's go. And then finally, timing chain cover can come off. Pop off the timing chain here. Now we're gonna pull the crank, check out the bearings. The bearings actually feel pretty good. Uh, we'll see if there's any damage to them.
The main bearing caps for 302s are marked with an arrow to the front and then uh, a number one, number two, number three, number four, and then you have the back one. Out of there, so we're gonna go ahead and pull these. Boom, two. All right, so where on the bearings? The bearings are not too bad, uh, but there is some uh, scarring, not scarring, but there's some some definitely some pressure marks on the inside of the bearing so those things were ready to be changed check out three and four yeah even more there I can see it right there these things were really far gone Good thing we're doing a rebuild. The last one. I don't see any scratches or scarring, but there is some, uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but definitely some wear. So similar to the others, maybe a little worse on this one, maybe not. And the crank doesn't look too awfully bad. I, I spun it a second ago to look at it and uh, there's no scratching at all so just general wear and then pull that out pop the bearings out Yeah, a lot of wear right in there. A lot of wear right in there. Not too awfully bad. Got some pretty good wear there. Now let's pull the cam. For the cam. All right, let's pull the back bottom. Back bottom, back bottom, there you go. This engine's life had to have been tough because I have never smelled oil as burnt as this oil is. Never smelled oil that burnt before. I'll thread the bolt in just a little bit. Gonna support the cam as it comes out uh, with my hand in one of the cylinders here. And it's a baby. All right. Cam lobes actually look fine. I have some wear on them, but not bad. This cam is going to get replaced. Um, a little bit more aggressive cam. Not tons. I'm not looking to make a lot of horsepower. I just want a little more than stock. Looking in cylinder number one, I just cleaned it out uh, with some cleaner. And I don't think you can probably see that. I can still see the crosshatch hone marks in the cylinder sleeve right here. Uh, they're very defined and um, they continue all the way to the very top of the cylinder. The second thing is there's almost no ridge on the cylinder. I, I can't feel anything there. So I know that the cylinder wall is actually really good. and. Without this ridge here, that tells me that it's got to be within a couple thousand. So let's let's take a look at that. Let's do some measuring and see what that looks like. The only small concern is in cylinder one. In cylinder one, at the bottom of the stroke, there it's very hard to see, but it's right there, right inside of where the cylinder stops. There is a wear patch that goes all the way down past the cylinder sleeve. If I put my finger back to where the top of the piston stops, I can feel a very slight difference in the material from the wear spot and the actual outside of the cylinder bore. So I don't know how big a deal that is. I'm not sure if it will hone out, uh, but I wanted your impressions. It also just may be carbon buildup down there that I'm feeling. So I'm gonna scrub it out and uh, see if that changes things. But that is the only one concern that my amateurish 
engine building skills uh, would be concerned about. So um, that's kind of where we're at as far as what I think is like the only issue with the motor. All right, I went down to the harbor and got uh, a set of bore gauges there. So we're going to uh, use these guys and uh, check the bores. I'm gonna grab the big one, which is the up to six inch bore. And we're gonna check these. And I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start with cylinder one since it has that small area down in the bottom that uh, of the, uh, um, what do they call that? The uh, down at the bottom of the stroke. Um, and we're gonna test that. So I'm gonna slide that in spin it to where I've got exactly 90 degrees on that thing. Got it right in the center of that. Tighten that up, pull it out. So 4.002, 4.003, that's about where I am. So just barely over a four inch bore. Most of my cylinders uh, are out of round. So they're not out of round by much, but they're out of round. So from here to here, in the center of the cylinder, uh, this is where we get the biggest variance. So I'm at 4.003 to 4.007, depending on the cylinder and depending on where it is in the stroke. So the further down in the stroke it goes, the larger it is. So it's got a little bit of taper and it's got a little out of round. Uh, so I don't know if that is that important. I don't know if maybe the new Molly rings will actually seal that or whether I should actually have it overboard. It doesn't seem like it's that big a deal. Now my horizontal sidewalls, these are almost all from top to bottom at a four inch to a 4.001 uh, measurement. So, and that's on every single cylinder. So horizontally, they're great. Vertically, uh, right here, uh, they're off by about three thousandths of an inch. So tell me what you think about that. Should I, it's $1,400 in Colorado Springs to have this decked, machined, uh, and, and cleaned along with the heads. And uh, I don't know if I really want to go to that expense for such a small change. If you notice on the heads, it's kind of dark, but uh, it's obvious that the exhaust valves on the heads, at least almost all of them, with the exception of like one, two of the cylinders, are completely white, which is, uh, I think, an obvious sign of running lean which is a condition that normally happens with these vehicles because they're trying to be fuel efficient. Uh, but I don't know that I've ever seen valves this white before. Um, same with the spark plugs. The spark plugs were totally white on the end, uh, but I didn't expect to see the valves like that. So that is the engine teardown. We, at this point, feel pretty good about this motor still and uh, deciding whether or not to take it to the machine shop to have it machined uh, or just uh, hone it myself, uh, really scrub it good, get it totally cleaned up, um, and replace the cam bearings, obviously replace all of the running gear. It, it's basically a complete running gear change with exception of the crank, and then decide what intake we're gonna do with it. So that's kind of where I'm leaning. Uh, if any of you have advice on whether or not, just from viewing the video, if you can tell based on my tolerances that I found in the cylinder walls, uh, whether I should have it machined um, and, and just go the extra bit. I mean, it's $1,400. If I don't have to spend $1,400, I don't want to spend $1,400. Uh, but if I have to, then I will. Um, it's still cheaper than buying a new 302 um, out of the gate that I can tell. So uh, we are going to continue the build process on this motor and, uh, and go from there. So leave a like if this helped you out at all. Uh, leave comments if you can give me some advice on what you think I should do with this motor. And I will see you in the next episode. All right. Let's go. Sounds very charismatic. Good yeah. Sometimes I have a tendency to be flat, so I have to like to be flat. Don't be flat. Also, make sure you're not overcharacterizing, otherwise you look like some sort of like... Welcome to Sesame Street. Hey! There is. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, do that for me real quick. <laughs> <laughs>
if you think I'm over characterizing something as bland as a motor build because my daughter who's sitting right over here <laughs> believes that I am over characterizing it somewhat sensationalizing it for a video that I wouldn't normally do this in a, in a regular build I wouldn't be animated and it wouldn't be loud and obnoxious but then again does that sound like me it's not that you're over I am loud and obnoxious. it's not that you're over animating the build it's <laughs> Denali seems to like it. <laughs> your inner, in your outro, or like, instead of like, hi, it's like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> this is what she's doing. I don't do that. That's not what I'm doing. <laughs> That's a wrap for Mop Point 3 Garage. It's been fun tearing this down. I'm excited to get it built. Let's go. <laughs> is that over here, guys? I like that. <laughs> Please leave a like and subscribe and we're gonna get going on this. And by the way, I did the whole gun thing for my daughter who thinks I'm over characterizing a simple engine build. Have a great day.